Thank you for the support from the uh, other side. I just want to uh, stand up here and explain a little bit about this resolution. This House is the federal government. We stand here supporting um, undocumented immigrants to uh, be able to receive financial aid at higher education institutions, whether that be a community college, um, a trade school, or a university. Um, higher education is absolutely the catalyst to help enable people to live better lives. I'm going to talk to you um, a little bit about the background, and then I'm going to talk about the fairness of this issue and how we want to bring about fairness, and then about how this will improve our society, absolutely. My partner over here is going to talk about the economic benefits, about how this will help us all financially. First of all, let's think about you guys. You guys are um, a product of your parents. Um, you know, you guys may have come from other countries. Um, obviously, here at HPU, we're a third international students. Um, in, in the United States, a lot of people um, have immigrated here, um, and, and kids have grown up. They've gone through school, public education, and they want to go to college. Right? Well, what if their parents came here illegally, undocumented? Then they have no opportunity to go to education. They have to pay out-of-state tuition, and they might not be able to get uh, financial aid at all. So we stand here and say, well, let's talk about a good society. What does a good society look like? Well, it's educated. It's intelligent. And today we're going to make the case, and hopefully we'll prove the case, that a most educated society will be a best society. So I'm going to talk about how the essential argument is about inclusiveness or exclusiveness, exclusion. And if you want to support exclusiveness, then we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about the American citizens who can't afford college? Like, do we really want to give people who aren't even Americans money when there are Americans who probably need that money to get an education to? Sure, education is absolutely essential. And if we're talking about financial aid, then we need to fix the system. We need to fix a broken system. But until that system is solved, we need to educate everyone, give everyone the opportunity to have a higher education. So, great question. But we're talking about education for everyone and allowing opportunity. It is not very hard. So that gets into my first point, um, fairness. You know, allowing people to earn an education. It's not very um, confusing, it's not very hard. Currently, the United States Supreme Court has mandated that children of illegal immigrants are entitled to education, K through 12. That is a fact. And, and why did they say that? Because an educated society is a good society. So we do not check immigration status for children. Yet when somehow they want to go to college, they're not able to, to do that. They don't have financial aid. And they pay out of state tuition because they can't prove that. I'll, I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit more um, about how they have to pay. And that's discrimination against someone's opportunity. So that is not fair. That's my first point. I'm going to talk about improving society and how is that not fair. Why is it the U.S.'s responsibility to like educate individuals from another country when that country should be doing that themselves? But, but yet again, you're refusing to look at the point. Is that if a child comes here and their parents bring them here, you are denying opportunity for that person to be able to receive higher education. So sure that they didn't get an education somewhere else, but is that really the child's fault? So we are talking about creating a better society. So if you don't agree with fairness and equality and opportunity for people, okay, that's one thing. And sure, everyone is, it, it, obviously, higher education is expensive. But we are talking about allowing opportunity for everybody. And that's fair. So my second point is about how this is improving society. Who does this hurt? Who does this hurt? Okay, well, yes, our class sizes are full. But we can build more schools. We can hire more professors. Sure, <laughs> HPU, is, HPU is actually growing right now. But you're saying that we should deny opportunity for some because their parents made a choice. Sir, I'll take a question. How are we going to fund all of these programs if we're paying for everyone's school, we're building new schools, and we don't have the opportunity to increase taxes in the status quo? Well, but, but taxes are paid for by what? Not by, immigrants. By employees. By employees. And, and yet, yet again, you, you don't realize the fact they are here. How many illegal immigrants here? Maybe it's 15 to 20 million. They are here, they are working, they are paying taxes. And they will continue to pay taxes and be here until we fix this policy. So if you want to deny them opportunity to better their lives, to get better jobs, to, to be able to contribute to the society, my partner is going to talk about the economic opportunity. And this will pay for itself. Ed education pays for itself. A bachelor's degree absolutely pays for itself. An educated worker makes more money and pays more taxes. And that's why we value education so much for our already documented people, for our already people that are living here, that are citizens here. But you are denying that to other people. Um, so that is improving society. They already pay tuition, they already pay taxes, 
that we're discriminating them a little bit more. Uh, so this will improve society. Education is a catalyst for better choices. So if we want to improve society, which is our goal as citizens, we will allow this to happen. I think that's the fourth question, but I'll answer that and then I'll continue. Ladies and gentlemen, Pino, he keeps saying a good society. A good society comes from education, right? Well, why do the societies that these individuals come from not deserve to be a good society as well? Yeah, absolutely. People are, have escaped societies that are not good and they have came here. We've allowed them to come here. For how many years have we allowed them to come here? In the 80s we had amnesty because there's so many people. But a broken system that we both can agree on is a broken system. But I'm saying that we should allow opportunity and improve our society and it will actually benefit everyone. So if they want to deny opportunity, that's fine. But let's talk about the issue. Sure, there's broken societies in other countries, but we've allowed them to come. We haven't stopped them from coming. We actually appreciate their contribution to our society. I heard a statistic the other day about 7 out of 10 people that work at Intel, engineers, are actually from India. So we allow those people to come here. We've allowed, obviously, all of these people, uh, whether or not, you know, whatever trade it is, to come here. We haven't checked their statuses, we haven't stopped them from coming, we've allowed them to come, we've supported them, we've enabled them, we've even given them amnesty and aid. And now, yet again, we continue to allow them to be here, we appreciate them, they pay taxes, but we're not allowing them to get the education, it just makes no sense. And so, until we fix the immigration issue, the status, we should allow these people to get education. We should allow them to continue beyond high school be able to improve their lives, become doctors, lawyers, whatever you want. Why, why, should we, why should we deny that opportunity of education, which is something we feel so greatly and so strongly in the United States of America. And so, it will improve our society, and it's fair and the right thing to do with my partner will talk about economic opportunity. Thanks so much. I'd like to thank the esteemed Prime Minister.